we're going to discuss drawing odds today. Um, we've discussed drawing odds at the commission a few times before, but it keeps coming up with hunters, and that's why we're discussing it again today. So the question here is why review drawing odds? Basically, Idaho has a whole host of controlled hunts. It has 118 controlled hunts for deer, 234 for elk, and 47 controlled hunts for pronghorn. Those hunts have a wide range of drawing odds for the antlered hunts. For deer, drawing odds range from 1.3% to 53.1%. For elk, it's 0.7% all the way up to almost 72%. And for pronghorn, it's 3.2% to 61.9%. There is high demand for these hunts. There are over 106,000 first choice applicants for the deer, elk, and pronghorn hunts in the state of Idaho. In addition to that, there has been prior commission direction to look into drawing odds. Um, specifically, the concept of bonus points has come up several times in the last few years before the commission. The commission reviewed bonus point systems in 2006 and in 2010. The 2010 review included an in-depth review of all the drawing systems in the 11 western states. And in fact, in July 2010, the commission made a decision not to adopt a bonus point system. The reason for this was primarily the potential impact that it would have on new hunters, um, the lack of sportsman consensus about specific aspects a of a bonus point plan, and also some sportsman perception that the commission was considering a bonus points plan as a way to raise fees. On top of these re reasons, the fact remains that a bonus point system doesn't actually change overall drawing odds. It just makes more hunters likely to actually experience the average. So it doesn't change the average, it just makes more people likely to experience it. So despite the fact that in 2010 the commission made the decision not to implement a bonus point system, interest among hunters has stayed high regarding potentially changing drawing odds. And because of that, we've continued to look for other ways to change drawing odds. Um, chat rooms such as Monster Muleys, Bowsight, etc., there is frequent chatter about drawing odds because hunters are looking at other states and other states have different systems. For example, Montana has a bonus point system. In Utah, there's differential pricing for different types of tags. For example, a general elk tag in Utah is $50, but a limited entry elk tag is $285 in Utah. In Nevada, they have different lengths of layouts. There's a five-year layout if a hunter successfully draws a bull elk permit, and a 10-year layout if that same hunter successfully harvests a bull elk. So there are different ways to change drawing odds, and hunters are pretty savvy to those. We wanted to actually use this exercise to look at different means of actually changing drawing odds, unlike what bonus points would do, and see what those would do, some of the trade-offs that hunters might expect if we implemented any of those systems. So but all of this basically stems from hunter frustrations. Um, the odds that we report on the website are averages, and not too many hunters experience the actual average. Um, if we have a 10-tag hunt and 100 people apply for that 10-tag hunt, each hunter basically has a 1 in 10% chance of drawing, or 10% drawing odds. Another way to look at this, and what I'll kind of be coming back to today, is that on average, if a hunter applies for that same hunt every single year, any given hunter will draw that hunt one every 10 years, approximately. However, we all know folks that exceed that average. So we all know folks that draw that same tag, that you're supposed to draw one every 10 years, two or three times in 10 years. And we all know, and many of us are, people that don't live up to that average. Instead of drawing one in every 10 years, it takes us 12, 15, or longer years to draw. That leads to a feeling of frustration, and on top of that, a feeling of injustice. Why did that guy draw three times in the last 10 years, and I haven't drawn, I've been putting in for it for 15 years? This is compounded by the fact that we have some very sought after hunts in the state. Um, for example, the Unit 45 Bennett Hills deer hunt consistently has 25 to 3% drawing odds over the last couple of decades. Um, this translates to drawing that tag, if you put in for it consistently, once every 33 years or so. It's basically a once in a lifetime hunt, but unlike sheep, Unlike moose, it's not explicitly stated anywhere. So that's why we're looking at these kind of things right now. So there are two basic ways to actually change overall drawing odds. Um, you can reduce the number of applicants, or you can increase the number of tags. If there are fewer applicants for the same number of tags, odds go up. If you're able to increase tags and keep the same number of applicants, odds go up. Now, tag levels are set biologically. We go out, we do a survey, we see more elk, we're able to offer more tags. So this presentation doesn't focus on that. This presentation basically focuses on restrictions on the number of applicants as a way to help drawing odds along. 
And today, basically, we're going to focus on four different means of potentially changing drawing odds. These are longer layouts for successful applicants in antlered hunts, restricting applicants um, to applying for only one species per year, restricting applicants for high-quality deer, elk, or pronghorn hunts to applying for only one species per year, or, as I mentioned with the Utah example before, differential pricing for high-quality deer, elk, or pronghorn hunts. Mm -hmm.